Anna from Bondi Productions, aka the Jack Frost of the crew. This is my second hoodie and today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how I did this hoodie for Jack Frost from Rise of the Guardians. First you're going to start out with some white fabric paint I got from Hobby Lobby and a angled or flat paintbrush with as little paint as possible on it and I just went along the seams of the hoodie so the seams like here where it's literally on the hood part of the hoodie and then I spread it out with my fingers and I found it a little more efficient just to go ahead and go ham with the paintbrush. And then along the pocket lines and I found it a little more pleasing to the eye just to kind of fill in the corners a little more. But you want to be very sparingly with the paint so that way you can get that nice frosted faded effect. And generally you're just going to go everywhere where there is an end. So on the sleeves, on the seam of the sleeve where the cuff is and eventually were the actual hood itself and the strings. As for the paintbrush I'm using, I actually just bought a 25 pack that was like $5 from Walmart, so you can really find this stuff anywhere. I found this at the dollar store. You don't really need anything special as long as you have a skinny brush, a flat brush, and a kind of big brush for later, and a sponge. As for the paint, you can find it at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, anywhere else. As for the frost lines, as we're going to call them, I found out that it's a lot easier to make little V's along the seams that you want to make frost at. Also, it's helpful to not have a ton of paint on your very, very, I can't emphasize how skinny this brush was, skinny brush, because it adds a faded effect, which makes it look like ice. And if you need a little more paint or if it needs to be a little more opaque, you can add more pigment to the brush as you go along. I found that if you're making a joint that crosses over another line, it looks kind of cool to have a, a little more opaque paint on that joint. It just looks really cool. It kind of looks a little bit like frost. And if you blend it with your finger, it, 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 I can't emphasize how, how good it looks. As for elongating these lines and making it look more and more like frost, just make little branches until you're kind of satisfied. Also, it helps to kind of go back over the lines with paint and spread it out so it kind of adds on to that faded effect as you go along. So don't forget to elongate the frost onto the shoulders past the seam just a little bit so that way it looks like it's just one continuous piece of ice that you're wearing, basically. Now you're going to continue this process onto the pocket where you're going to make little lines all along the seam or little V's. I kind of did a little bit of both and then just repeat what you did on the hoodie. As you can see, I have a reference on my computer. It's a really nice idea to have a giant reference that you can zoom in on. I use my computer because it's a really big screen, but you can use your iPhone because you can actually see a little more details on your iPhone, or at least it helps me kind of focus on one thing at a time. As you're starting to make your little branches, just kind of make sure that it looks, it gives a little bit of more of a crowded effect since the ice is kind of condensed into one area. I don't know much about ice. I just know that it crisscrosses each other when it's in art and it looks really pretty. So that's kind of the effect I wanted to go for. It also kind of looks like a little fantasy forest to me. I don't know, maybe that's just me. All right, time for the cuff. So the only thing that's really different about the cuff is that you're gonna go both ways on the seam instead of just one way down or one way up. And then you're gonna make the frost very long. The frost lines are going to be very, very long and kind of touching each other, but not really. They're just going to have a grand old time being themselves and not being as crowded as everyone else on the sweater. Also, I found if, if you add curves, it looks a lot prettier. I don't really know why, it just does. That's my personal opinion though. And the only thing I really connected on this part of the sweater was just where the seams would be on the sides of the arms. So that way it doesn't look like I just painted one side or the other. As for his back, you are going to repeat the process on the front. Only difference is when you add the little frost lines, 
you are going to make sure it's smaller than the hoodie. At least that's my personal opinion. When I was watching the movie, I didn't really see any frost going on until he had his hood up. So I don't know, it's artist choice. And here's the sponge method I mentioned earlier. I used as little paint as possible on a circle sponge and just went ham. And I just continue to add a little bit of a frosty faded effect on the back of the sweater. And again, you're going to repeat the process you have done before. This is a very repetitive project, but on the bright side, you get a lot of practice on how to paint frost lines. I'm not a painter, but I'm pretty sure I got better as time went on. Time for the final stretch. Now you're gonna start with the hoodie. Uh, it's a really good idea to actually use a paper towel and stuff it into the hoodie uh, hole, I guess, so you don't paint the other side. And then you just repeat the frost thing. I kind of went diagonal this time because I just found it a little bit quicker. As for the point of the hoodie or the top of the hoodie, I actually used the spray paint bottle you can see to have something 3D there that I could paint on because it is a 3D object. I'm gonna be wearing it and I kinda of wanna see what it looks like on a rounded object of such. And right around here is where I noticed there is a roach very close to my face and I warned your ears now because I have a high pitched scream. Those with you earphones, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I won the war with the bane of my existence with the shoe I continued making frost lines I actually connected the bottom of the hoodie frost lines to the hoodie seam ones just by making a straight line or connection of some sort and then just continuing on upwards just painting away and blending it into the hoodie The very next thing I did was actually make frost on his elbows because I noticed that was a thing in the movie and his very intense scene with pitch. So I just continue to put a little bit of paint onto a sponge and just sponge it out with the spray paint bottle inside the sleeve as a rounded thing. I actually measured where my elbows were before I did this. I put it on and like kind of almost marked my way. And then I just continued to make frost lines at random, eventually kind of connecting them, but being very careful not to make it look like a snowflake. The second to last thing I did was spatter my hoodie, which means I got a wet paintbrush and I hit my hand multiple times to get little dots across the hoodie, but I did put production down. As you can see, I accidentally made a giant block, so you gotta be very careful as to the amount of paint that is on the brush. Also, paint doesn't dry fast, and I forgot that at this point. So there is little dots that I didn't want there because I accidentally flipped over the protection I used to get it not all over the hoodie. But it looks like snowflakes, so I got the desired effect I wanted. So the very last thing I did was spray the entire jacket very lightly with glitter spray paint in the color silver. I was a lot more dense where there was a lot more frost, but other than that, that's about it. I hope this tutorial on how to make a Jack Frost sweatshirt kept the spirit of fun alive in you. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. This is Anna saying, keep it frosty everyone.